In Fast Track Schedule 10, there are two scheduling methods that we can use when working with resources. Today we'll take a look at how to utilize those methods. The first thing that we need to do when utilizing these methods is switch over to a different layout that will show us more information about these methods. To switch layouts, we'll go to Project, Layouts, and today we'll switch to the Resource Layout. We'll see that the Resource Layout adds in three additional columns, Resources Assigned, Effort Driven, and Work in Hours. The first scheduling method that we'll take a look at today is called Effort Driven Scheduling. With effort-driven scheduling, we say that the amount of work, typically calculated in man-hours, will always remain constant across the task, no matter how many resources we assign or the amount of effort that any resource applies. Instead, our duration will automatically either increase or decrease as the number of resources changes. When working with effort-driven scheduling, since we say that work value will always remain constant, what we'll do is actually estimate how many hours will it take to complete a given task. When we do this, we'll be sure to start at our lowest level in our outline. In this case, we'll come down to line four, business goals, and come to our work hours column. Here we can actually enter any value for work hours. For example, I will enter 40 and then press enter. When I enter 40 hours, we see a few things happening. Number one, we see that an activity bar is automatically created and that activity bar is created with a duration of five days. This is because our default work calendar is defined as having an eight hour work day. So we take our total work hours, 40 hours, divided by eight hours per day to give us this five day duration. When we're working with effort driven scheduling, when we want to then assign a resource, all we need to do is come to our resources assigned column. We'll select in the column. And if you've already added resources in your resources layout, you'll notice that we have a drop down arrow. We can open this menu and easily assign any resource that already exists in our file. So here I'll go ahead and select Jenny and then press enter. Now you'll notice that once we assign Jenny, this activity does not change at all. Again, because with an effort driven task, we estimate our work hours and the work hours will always remain constant unless either the number of resources we assign changes or the amount of effort that each resource applies changes. In order to see how that work value will remain, in order to see how that duration may change when working with an effort-driven task, let's go ahead and create a second task. Here we'll come down to our next row, again to our work hours column, and to the same value for work hours, 40 hours, and press enter. Again, we can assign our resources in a similar manner. I'll come over to resources assign, open my drop-down menu. Here I'll assign Maria. And if we then open the drop down menu again, we can assign a second resource, Paul. Now we can see we have both resources assigned. So if we go ahead and press enter, we'll notice that as soon as we press enter, the task actually cuts its total duration. Originally it was five days. Now it's 2.5 days. Again, the reason for this is, is because each resource works a default eight hour day. So essentially what we have here is each resource works a combined total to give us 40 hours. So each resource works 20 hours. So that means that over that period of time, they must work 2.5 days each to give us that grand total of 40 hours or two and a half total days of duration. The second scheduling method that we'll talk about today is known as fixed duration scheduling. With fixed duration scheduling, we say that the duration to complete that task will always remain constant as we add or remove resources or increase or decrease the amount of effort that each resource applies, the work value will automatically increase or decrease along with that. So with fixed duration tasks, since we say the duration will always remain constant, we'll actually create these simply by estimating the duration for that task. So here we'll just come down to our next blank row, come down to customer and market analysis, place my cursor in the duration column, and I'll just enter the same five day duration I have above and press enter. Now when working with fixed duration activities, we may notice a little bit different behavior. If we start off over to the right hand side, we'll notice that effort driven is currently marked as yes. Well, we would like this to be fixed duration instead. So the first thing we need to do is just select yes and change this to no. However, after we change this effort driven column to say no, we actually still need to mark this task as being fixed duration. To do this, we can simply double click on the activity bar and select the box labeled fixed duration in the upper right hand corner. After we select fixed duration, select close, and this will save the setting on this activity. Now the next thing we'll notice 
is that our work hours are currently left blank. That's because with fixed duration scheduling, work will never be calculated until resources are assigned. Again, that work value is going to be dependent on the number of resources assigned or the amount of effort that they apply, so that once we assign those resources, work values will appear. If we'd like to take a look at that, we can come over to our resources assigned column, use our drop down menu, assign any resource from the list, and press enter. Now again, with this fixed duration task, we see that we have a five day duration, so it's automatically calculated work to be a 40 hour. Again, just as we said with effort driven, this is because our default day for our project is defined as eight hours per day. So we now have five days times eight hours per day to give us that total of 40 hours. If we'd like to see how work will be calculated when we assign multiple resources, we'll come down to our last task product scope. Again, I'll enter five days for my duration, change my effort driven column to no. Now, if you don't always want to double click on the activity to change this to fixed duration, we actually do have a column dedicated to this. We can insert that column into our file by going to insert column. Here you can actually type the search. So if I just type F, we'll go down to our Fs. We can then just scroll down a little bit, fix duration, and OK. Here we'll see that for product scope, it still shows no for fixed duration. So we'll simply go in, select yes, and return. Now when we're ready to assign our resources, we'll come back to our resources assigned open our drop down menu, assign our first resource, assign our second resource, and press return. Now with our fixed duration task, we can see that the duration has remained constant at five days. However, since we've assigned two resources, our total work has actually doubled. So now we have each resource working 40 hours total across that five day period for a total amount of work of 80 hours on this task. By utilizing both effort driven and fixed duration scheduling, we can easily set up and control exactly how our activities will function throughout our project.